Hey guys, Scanner Danner here with four of my students from Rosedale Technical College. We are here after hours doing a no start at Latour's Auto. They wanted to come with me, some extracurricular activities. And uh, we have a no start. Let me get you on the car. 2006 Lincoln LS, and it is a 3.9 3.9 liter engine. That's what yes. the. All right. And uh, we have. I didn't bring all my equipment today, but we do have the Encore, and uh, it's not really going to help us anyway because we have a no com with the engine computer. So no reason to get you onto the scan tool. It doesn't communicate. We were doing some checks off camera just for a couple of minutes, and what uh, uh, James, one of my students here, had mentioned is we have a um, message that says ETC uh, engine fail safe mode. So that's not good. Um, another thing that we noticed when we crank it the tachometer doesn't bounce we can't use the check engine light on this one because the entire cluster goes out when you crank it watch okay so the cool part about this car and having these guys with me is we just covered chapter 9 in class which is the 5 volt reference circuit and we talked about how important it is when you have a vehicle that has a no start no communication to uh, quickly check one of the sensors that would use a 5 volt reference and what we found is our reference voltage is low so um, I guess before I show you that there's a couple more observations here throttle body has been replaced uh, all of the coil packs look like they're new both sides it looks like and uh, we started at the fuel rail pressure sensor so um, I, I again apologize I didn't have the camera turned on initially but I, I told my guy standing here next to me find a sensor that has the, the 5 volt reference that you know it, it should be there and pressure sensors would be one of them so I'll show you this fuel rail pressure sensor this is the first reading we took look at it bouncing around 1.8 1.7 we saw 2 volts on this at one point in time move over to the middle wire here in a minute but I want you to watch when I'm watch this circuit I'm pretty sure this is my reference voltage it should be five go to the middle wire on this three wire pressure sensor we should have a five volt ref signal on the ground see that one zero move to the third wire I'm reading a half a volt so one thing for sure is we are low on our reference circuit on this sensor. Now one of the things that we talked about, again off camera, I should have turned the camera on right away. I'm disappointed that I didn't, but you didn't miss much. We are concerned about our ground connection. So let's go to the fuse box and just make sure that we're reading 12. And of course the battery was completely dead, so we have a jump pack on it. But there you go 11.7 volts so our ground is good and that means that this reading we are getting on this fuel tank pressure sensor the highest voltage reading wire which is yellow and blue or yellow and green tracer yeah, um, I have a question. one second is 1.8 volts I'm pretty sure that's my reference circuit all right go ahead James I'm listening uh, with your battery voltage low would that also bring the it, it should not. It would not. Correct. Not. In fact, that's a great question. Um, the reason why they use a 5 volt reference is it's low enough that battery voltage fluctuations will not interfere with the sensing circuits. And it won't pull it down. It won't pull it down. So um, if they use, say, like a 9 volt reference like they used to, you can get a weak battery. Mm -hmm. And during a cranking situation, it can affect the inputs to the computer and that's one of the reasons they use a 5 volt so yes our battery voltage is low but I'm not worried about it being low to the point it's going to interrupt my reference circuit all right our next step because I'm not hundred percent sure on this fuel tank pressure sensor and where the uh, reference voltage is I'm pretty confident in the readings we have we have low reference voltage the next step I did is I unplugged the TPS this is a four wire TPS and what it uses is a, a 5 volt ref signal, two signals, and a ground. It shares the reference and ground. And so I know that one of these four wires should absolutely have 5 volts on it. 
And so I'm gonna go down the line and show you guys that. All right, so you guys got both of these in the shot here. I'm just going down the line, just very quickly. I am, I am front probing this connector, but I'm not stuffing this pin in there. I'm just touching on the terminal itself. There's one volt on that wire, zero on that one, 2.13 on that one, and 1.3 on that one. So the um, circuits that are one volt, for you guys that have been following me for a while, you'll know about the bias voltage they use on these sensor inputs. There's a resistor in the computer. We just talked about this too. This is in chapter seven in my book. That would be one of the uh, sensor signal wires, the 1.2 and fluctuating. Here's the other sensor signal wire, the 0 0.9, 0 0.95 fluctuating. I saw a one volt on that before. This one should be my reference circuit. I know that because it's the highest voltage. What color is that wire? And it is yellow too just like the yellow wire on the fuel tank pressure sensor. Um, this is my reference and what we'll do from this point is we'll stay here back probing and two volts. So here's, this is where, uh, this is where we stopped, okay? Um, so that's what you guys missed off camera is we went that far and I said, initially I wasn't gonna film because we're just here learning, right? And I just, after I saw this, after going over it, just literally yesterday in class, I was like, I said, we need to turn the camera on. I don't have all my heavy equipment with me, but I do have this little itty bitty camera and we should be able to at least troubleshoot this. So the next plan, when I have low reference voltage, is I want to find out why. Um, and I think I would attack this differently as far as no reference voltage or low. And, and I'm thinking computer powers and grounds, of course. And I'm also thinking a shorted sensor. So I could, while I'm here, start unplugging sensors that I know use this reference. For example, the fuel tank pressure sensor, or fuel rail pressure sensor, which sits just, yeah, it's still in the screen too. I can start by unplugging this thing. And I don't know that this is necessarily, wouldn't that be funny if it was a shorted first sensor I grab and unplug is shorted. <laughs> that would be cool. I don't think so, but I'm gonna try it. Make the job easy. So if I unplug this guy and reference voltage still stays low like it is, this is not my problem. Another one would be this um, DPFE sensor that's part of the EGR system that sits right here. I'm gonna unplug that guy. Came up a little bit, but no dice there. That's not my shorted sensor. One other thing you wanna be aware of when you're unplugging sensors you want to shut the key off, turn the key back on. So I'm going to do that real quick. That's key off. I'm going to wait five seconds. Some of these computer systems have a failsafe for the reference circuit that you have to cycle the key. Nothing. Still at zero. And I turned the key back on. That's weird that my reference was now at zero with the... Wait. Let's watch it. I told the guys off camera too, you missed one more piece here, and that is we have a vehicle that's not communicating, not starting. There's no reason to check for spark, check fuel pressure, none of that when you have no reference voltage. That is acting very, very strange. Let's keep watching it. Remember, remember how you brought up about when... You can speak. I want you on. I want your <laughs> you, voice on camera. Do you remember when you were talking about the wire when it heated up, it had high resistance in it? Yes. If you ever, has that ever crossed your mind where you're watching that and the voltage slowly, slowly yes. climbs? That, that's, that's exactly what I'm thinking about. If I see that voltage climbing, I'm thinking about a, a, uh, some type of wiring problem, some type of connection, corrosion, for sure. Let's just keep watching that for a minute because we did have two volts on that. We don't even get a volt. That is, that is weird. Slowly climbing though. Now there's there's multiple ways we can go here. And one of the things would be helpful is knowing all of our tie-ins for our reference circuit. You know, which sensors are using the five volt ref, which ones are not, and then looking at computer powers and grounds. I mean that's where we are with this car. It would be nice if we could pinpoint it right off the bat. That doesn't look like that's gonna be the case. I'm gonna leave these guys unplugged. No reason to plug them back in right now. I already have the TPS unplugged, that's where we are here. Um, I am concerned about 
So I am on the strut. I was going to say I'm concerned about block grounds too because the the battery is in the trunk on this. And so I have to consider that as well. My ground for my meter is on the strut tower. So I'm using body ground, not block ground. So this should be an accurate reading, even if I did have a bad block ground. But we do need to check for that too. But look at this thing rising. Can you just keep your hand? I'm going to crank this. I just don't want that moving. I'm going to crank it. Stayed relatively the same. Yeah, stayed relatively the same. Stayed about. Yeah, 0.5, 0.6, 0.5. That's just 0 .5. really weird. I'm just gonna wiggle my ground connection here just to be sure. I'm gonna go back to the fuse box real quick. Again, always checking my meter. These are things that I, I tell you guys all the time. Check your meter. Check your meter. Check your meter. You got weird readings. As you're troubleshooting, you should still be checking your meter. That's from the fuse box. It's 11.5 volts. So how's my ground on my meter? It's good. good. It's good. So how's my measurement here on my reference voltage? It's good. I'm not. It's not good, <laughs> but it's good as far as that's an accurate reading, right? We have low reference voltage. Let's look at the wiring diagram and. Uh, I'll figure out direction on what I want to go because I don't see any other sensors. Yeah, it's bleeding back up slowly. Is it? Yeah, because it's it's it that was in the sixes, float? now it's sure. the sevens. Slowly. Well, the math through. the math sensor would also that's out of the shot. Let's get that in there. Um, I, the mass airflow on Ford's does have a reference of it, uh, part of it, I think. Unplug the math. There, Whoa! It, jumped, it just jumped up. It jumped, jumped up to, to two, two but that's still not right. The plug back in 0.8 it should go to five not not uh two right so um i'm gonna cycle the key off and back on one more time just to see the result of that what that's suggesting to me remember each sensor is going to have a certain amount of current draw from that regulator and the fact that it jumped up some is just you're taking current away from a circuit that's having trouble delivering is what that means to me i don't think that's an issue with the mass airflow Shut the key off. That voltage dropped to zero. Yep. Turn the key back on. That should be immediately five. Mm, nope. One, three. Or one point three. So we're low again. So all of these sensors I've unplugged so far, none of them are the cause. Um, on the uh, variable valve timing on this, these are solenoids. I don't think those are position sensors. No, those are the solenoids. Um, any other reference circuit wire that I'm that I can get to from here is no. And I'm not worried about the thermistors. I'm not worried about the coolant sensor or intake air. Intake air is part of the map or mass airflow anyway, because those are isolated. Um, so I've gone as far as I can go really without a wiring diagram. I need to get a diagram and, and see how everything's tied together. 06 Lincoln, can you guys see the screen okay? I know mm -hmm. there's some. I there's some glare on it. Yeah, I can see it. All right. By the way, uh, this is Dan. Dan, come over here. I can't see your face. There's Dan right there. <laughs> right behind me. Man. This is James. Over to this. Yes, backwards. Yeah. This is Dakota. It's weird. The camera's, you know? All right. So engine performance, 3.9. What I'm looking for first, this would be, be helpful if we have motorcycles running in the background. <laughs> Alright, something I didn't mention, we do have that ETC message on the mm -hmm. on the dash. I'm surprised it even sets that message given that the engine computer is not talking. But the ETC system does have reference voltages involved too. Um, and so I, I guess as a starting point, we'll just kind of go down the line here and look for anything that says 5 volt ref. Something we talked about today, guys, see the signal return, see signal RTN. What is that? That's a sensor ground. Okay, just pointing that out to you. Uh, this is where it matters. ECT signal, uh, ETC, sorry, ETC signals, ETC ref. That's going to be a five volt ref circuit. ETC signal return is a sensor ground. I'm not worried about that. There's another ETC ref. A bunch of grounds on the right front fender. 
See, I don't know if we're going to do this first or if we're we're going to do powers and grounds. I'm not sure. I just want to eyeball all of my uh, reference circuits first. So that's going to my electronic throttle control module. Um, electronic throttle control module behind the left side of the dash. So that's what my acceler. That's it. Has to be my accelerator pedal. Yeah. Has to be. So what, there, there's two more references in there. Uh, let's go to the next page. How many? One of four. Make sure you're chewing that gum quietly, James. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot delete that. Yeah, that's our. There's our reference there for that. This would be reference here, reference here. That this is the um, EGR one that I already have unplugged. There's your fuel rail pressure sensor that I have unplugged. Your throttle position sensor that I have unplugged. Let's go down the line here. So even though they're showing these guys, let's be clear about this, even though they're showing these as separate reference wires on the, on the computer, remember that most of the time is only one regulator. So inside they're all sharing this. There might be two because this is a ETC system, but that's weird they call that a DC volt circuit. That's weird. But ref voltage, temp signal, coil, return, injector, ETC motor, signal, knock sensors, cylinder temperature. I'm not worried about any of my temp sensors. This is where all of this comes into play now, guys. All that theory we talking about those, you know, what can be shared, what can't be shared, what do you worry about, what don't you worry about. Now we're we're in it. So it looks like the only other thing on this reference circuit that we didn't unplug is the throttle actuator inside the car. In the car. So, I mean, rather than checking computer powers and grounds next, uh, it's real easy to do, to unplug that. That'd be two wires, right? Uh, according to this, it's actually like one, seven or eight wires. Because the throttle um, actuator, the APP sensor, it has two potentiometers. Actually, it actually showed three. Let me go back to it. It'd be the one that said left side of the dash had all those wires going to it. We got some other ones. I missed it here, guys. Look, these pressure transducers, too. Um, this is one, again, where you need to know what can be shared and what can't. But this, this one and this one, and that says, yeah, reference voltage. So we have an AC pressure transducer. We have a fuel tank pressure transducer. And we have this electronic, what they're calling throttle control module. Just kind of strange. It's got a bunch of potentiometers in it. Um, that should be my accelerator pedal. So I was wrong. We have three more we have to unplug. I can't get to the tank pressure sensor to unplug it. But I can get to the AC pressure transducer. It says left front of engine compartment. We're going to unplug that guy and then unplug the ETC. And all of this, to be clear, we might be going the wrong direction. It might just be a main power ground to the engine computer. I'm only going in this direction because... We don't we're, get new reference yeah, well, voltage. Well, yeah, and we're not working hard right now. It's not like we've done anything that was very time consuming, right? Um, so let's, uh, I'll leave this run. What should be the one in the Let's next? do the AC pressure, pressure transducer next. Just a quick shot of our reference voltage while we were looking at the diagram. It's still climbing, and we have the mass airflow unplugged, TPS is unplugged, uh, the pressure sensor for the EGR the fuel rail pressure sensor and what I wanted to do is the AC pressure transducer it said what left side did it say left side of engine compartment I think so I think here's your right there. here's your AC accumulator turn that light on for me to it's on that side yes it is good eyeball there brother yeah, left front. All right. yep now can I get down there oh, you need to that is it right there can I get there and un unplug that? While I'm unplugging this, we'll keep you focused here. Unplugged. Still the same. Inside now, inside. Let's do the accelerator pedal. All right, so my gas pedal is really not a gas pedal. It's a PlayStation controller. That's the connector I'm gonna unplug. I'll keep you focused on the multimeter. Still the same. Okay. 
So uh, we only have one sensor left and that's the one in the trunk or underneath, sorry, it's the one in the tank and it's not easy to get to out here in the gravel parking lot. So I think we're going to shift gears here and maybe look at computer powers and grounds now. You tell me, do we need to worry about our thermistors, Dakota? The engine coolant temp sensor, cylinder head temperature, or our, our, um, any thermistor. Yes, they share the reference, but we're not worried about them because they're isolated by that current limiting resistor inside. Okay? All right. So, um... I thought it was kind of interesting that when I shut the key off and turned the key back on that voltage was low. Uh, let's, yeah, let's check that one more time. Turn that key off. Yep, turn the key back on. See, so initial key on, it's lower. And what that's suggesting potentially is a low voltage ignition feed. One of my ignition feeds. Can you crank that for me real quick? Okay. Get to lower. It, and it would because it, that jump pack's weak now too. Um, but I, I'm only just looking for which power feed do I want to look at first or which ground. I want to look at my ignition power feeds first, just based on that. I apologize here for the p potentially poor camera shots. I'm doing the best I can with what we have today. Um, I am looking for ignition power feed so there's a there's a power right there there's a ground next to it I guess we could mark that too power here and here actually I'm not marking the grounds we're just gonna go after the power feeds first signal returns a ground all right so we have two looks like two power feeds on this page irritating that's spliced there and that comes from my PCM power relay so that would be a key on circuit um, instead of going to the computer and checking the computer power we could find out what else powers off of this on the power relay um, this is hot all the time we can look at that too but I want to know what else power uh, is powered here so the power relay is going to um, this gets energized, pulls the switch, power gets sent down this way. It comes from the red wire, which is on this 30 amp fuse right here. So it would come down this way, feeds these guys, comes over here. Um, but I want to check that feed. And so what I'm thinking is let's follow this wire right here where it goes. Green, red, page two. Let's see if this makes sense to you guys. Green, red comes up to my auxiliary junction box under the hood right front of the engine compartment that's cool so fuse 6 and fuse 5 are both powered by the power relay okay so I'm gonna go to fuse 6 and fuse 5 to see what kind of voltage I have there which will address my power relay circuit Does that make sense mm -hmm. fuse 6 fuse 5 5 and 6 on the box they're showing here so that would be should be these two guys right here yep. and if I have low voltage here we're, on, we're in business. Yeah. Okay. You guys missed that on the meter, didn't you? Damn it. <laughs> At least you got my reaction, though. So, going back to a 12 volt source. Our jump pack's down to 10 volts, so let's be clear about that. Battery voltage is weak, but here we go. Watch this fuse 3.8 volts on the fuse. 3.8 volts. This is fuse five and six. So what that means, the reason our reference voltage is low, we have low voltage coming into the computer. We have low voltage coming from the power relay, low voltage feeding these fuses and whatever else these fuses feed, solenoids, relays, whatever, we're on the right track. We can plug all of our sensors back in at this point. Because a shorted sensor is not our problem. But the procedure that we showed, everything we're going through here, is is relevant. Do you want me to bring this with you to, are you, are you checking? Power? I'm going to go back in and plug in my electronic throttle uh, uh, or accelerator pedal. 
Um, AC pressure switches back. Yeah, here. and we have the cooling fan still unplugged just because it was running all the time. Let me go plug this one back in. So you guys following the thought process here? Yes. This circuit that we're looking at, this green red feeds these fuses. So these fuses are low on voltage on both sides because they're coming from this. It does us no good to follow the other sides um, of these circuits and everything it feeds. And I could let you guys know, we'll mark them real quick. I just want to be clear that following these circuits isn't going to be fruitful at all because everything that's on here is going to be low. Transmission, you see the transmission solenoids, they'll be low voltage. Um, cooling fan system, no wonder the fan was running all the time. Low voltage there. I'll just give you a couple here, guys. EVAP canister purge, EVAP vent, or variable valve timing solenoids. Those would be easy to check real quick, but we don't need to. I'm telling you right now, they're going to be low voltage across the board. We're wasting our time there. Where we need to spend time now is we need to spend time back at this power relay. What I need to know now, we do know where our problem is. It's coming from this power relay, but I want to check the load side of the relay. So we check the control side of the relay um, by checking the fuses on the other page, right? That was on this wire right here. Mm -hmm. I also know that our problem is on that side of the splice because this one goes down to the engine co engine computer and my engine computer has low voltage too. And I didn't ever even check it. I know it does because our reference voltage is low. So our problem could be in this leg front to that splice, could be the relay itself. It could also be on this side. So the 30 amp fuse is where we're gonna go next. The battery junction box in the luggage compartment near the battery, so way in the back. All right, so here's my thought. I wanna know, is my problem coming from this fuse? We can go back that way, but I can go right to the power relay and I can check voltage here. So this relay should have two power feeds. Remember, all relays need two power feeds to work. So we should have 12 volt here and I know that because there's a coil and there's a ground, so that has to be one of my power feeds. Follow that over and it goes to a diode and then comes over here, which is to a fuse, right? That's one of the feeds for the power relay. I'm not worried about the control side. I know the relay's latching because we have low voltage here. So I'm not worried about this side, but I'm just making a point. When I go to this relay, I should have two power feeds. Here's one. And here's the second one. Well, and theoretically, we would have we'd have a like ten because that's what we're reading off the cor battery. Correct, correct. Correct. Yes. But remember, we had on this leg of the circuit, we have three volts. So if I have three volts on this coming in, then I know it's not a relay issue; it's a feed coming into the relay. So that's where we're going next. We'll go to the power relay. It says right front of engine compartment. Of course, it's a Ford, so it's not going to be marked. <laughs> Let me just look real quick. They're numbered. Stupid Ford. Is the number on Mitchell? So, no, unfortunately it's not. So what I need to do is get out of here for a second. Or we could just go back and check that 30 amp fuse in the back. I don't want to do that just yet. We're, we're learning things here too. So I need to know where my power relay is. So what we do is go to uh, electrical and we go to fuses and breakers. And then we want the one under the hood, and we should have a picture. You know, why can't Ford just include this in the cover? I don't know. But where's my power relay? Is the bottom left. Relay 14 is my power relay. Okay. okay? James, you want to be my guy? Sure. Take this relay out. Now, want to see two. Keep your head up right there. They haven't marked. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Just um, what you'll have, this is, hold on, this is load and this is control. So I should have a hot feed. The load side is what I'm worried about. One of these two. Get, pick your head up for a second. Right there. 9.65. Okay, and that's on the load side of the re... Oh, <laughs> oh no. Drop my teeth in. <laughs> on camera. On one. camera, too. Don't it's lose okay, that I have more. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Bayco light with the magnet. <laughs> nice use of For your the save. Nice use of your tool. So, so that's my load side of that relay. Is hold on, let me get that in the shot. Is 9.6 volts. That's that's full battery voltage. Our jump pack's getting weak. 
um, go to the con the control side anyway. We should have another nine. I'm okay that that's a little bit lower voltage, 8.4 on that one. All right, so how is my 30 amp fuse up to the relay? Good. It's good. In fact, what this looks like is a faulty, potentially a faulty relay. So um, it could be the feed coming in. And now here's the bad part about what we're doing. This is a non-loaded circuit. Here, I'm, I'm going to show you another tool you're going to want to buy from AES Wave here in a second. <laughs> James has been buying some tools. Um, here, I'm just going to go grab it. Okay, so what I want to do, the reason I brought this kit out, I want to do loaded circuit tests on this relay, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, hold that one. Nope, not that one. This one, or no, this one, right? Yes. So let me see the plug end of that so everybody else can see it. Yep, that's going to plug in where the relay goes. Go ahead and do that. Good. And then that plugs into the tool. And let's be clear about this. The way it's designed, you can only plug it in one way. You can't get it wrong. It already has load and control already configured. Okay. And then what this tool gives us is the ability to check control side and can check and check load side of the relay with it with it loaded so what i want to do is um now i'm sorry let's be clear uh the relay is not in the picture anymore mm -hmm. this box is now my relay so if i hit on the fact that everything just came to life when i hit on tells me pretty much my relay was the problem honestly this car should start right now did you hear that yeah here let yeah. me turn it off turn it back on Okay, did you hear that? Yeah. All right, but what I want to do first, I'm pretty sure the car is going to start. We have a bad relay. I just want to check my voltage levels. Unplug that uh, alligator clip from the end of that, the whole piece. Yep, and then plug it in straight into this on the top. My lead's seen better days, but so this would be my load side. See, I'm reading zero volts. Um, that's my, let's be clear, this are both load side pins. Go to the red one. The red one should be hot. Yep. All right, so what I was concerned about coming up to this is, yeah, we got nine volts up here, or battery voltage up here from that 30 amp fuse in the back. Is it possible we have a voltage drop on that circuit because we're unloaded? Could we have a fuse problem in the back wiring up to here that is only going to show itself once the circuit's loaded. That's why I wanted to use this tool because what this allows me to do for that 30 amp fuse is to flip the switch and load that circuit. How is my circuit from the back up to here? It's good. It's good. So that's why I brought this tool out. Does that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Just because we had nine volts up here, battery voltage up here, I know, again, for any, any of you tuning in late, our battery voltage is low. We have a jump pack on here that's about dead. Um, this is battery voltage. And when you unplug a relay, if you just go over here and you check your load side, which one was it, this one, the bottom? Yes. If you check this load side feed with the relay removed, it's not loaded. And so that's not an accurate reading. And the reason I plug this tool in is I wanted to check that load side feed while it was active and that's what we're doing with the top of this is I'm on the load side feed of that relay and now when I turn the switch on I'm now loading that circuit and that is a good feed we do have some voltage drop but we have other circuits that are active and the battery's weak this is good all right Could so you now go on the green side of this this is my switched side of the load and then we can flip the switch on and this is basically the relay now and there you go right we have 8.6 volts that's the feed out that means we should have 8.6 volts now on our fuses again this is misleading for someone jumping in here because you're saying oh you're that's bad well remember my jump packs weak hand me that t-pin this is with our our tool Put my alligator clip back on there. Uh, if we went up power and grounds on the computer, we would have been chasing the wrong way. 
Well, we would have we would have come back to this because what we would have found if we would have went to the computer, we would have found low voltage on that one wire at the computer. I'll, I'll show you again on the diagram. Just I want you guys to see that this isn't going to be three volts anymore. This is going to be eight. So I'm touching the fuse. There it is, right there. This car is going to start. Actually, it probably won't because our dump pack's so weak right now. Right? Now, can we come? Can we come back here and test five volt sure. difference yeah. back here? While we're at eight volts here, absolutely. Before we even start this car up, let's do that. Just um, go ahead and go to the top of the fuel tank pressure sensor. That yellow wire. Fuel tank pressure. Uh, I'm sorry, fuel rail pressure. That was the first one we went after. And you will see five here now, Dan. I, I if I was a betting man, I'd be putting a million dollars on it that we'll see five volts here. That's okay. money. <laughs> <laughs> you want the money now or later? So no, but think about this. I mean, how hard did we work? Not, Not that hard. How much stuff did we apply that we talked about this week? A, a lot. lot. <laughs> right? A lot. I know. I wish I could, I wish I could convince people to, you know, in, in our particular class and really across the world, pay attention to me when I'm talking. I'm not feeding you bullshit, you know? Uh, I'm going to try to crank it. I don't think there's enough voltage for this car to start. Nope. Jump pack's completely dead. So I'll shut this key off. We'll get a battery charger on this. I want you guys to come over to the wiring diagram real quick. To be clear, our relay is bad. It's the switched side of the relay. The, the latched side of the relay is bad. It's got a bad contact in it. For, for those of you that think that because a relay clicks that the relay is good, um, we learned something here today, didn't we? Right? Yeah. That relay can click all at once and not be good because the load side contacts can be burnt. That's what we have wrong with this vehicle. Load side contacts are burnt. We have a voltage drop that's occurring at the switch itself. We proved it with our tool that the relay is faulty. All right, back to the diagram real quick because I want to be clear for what you said, James. If we would have gone to computer powers and grounds, we would have been chasing our tail. Not necessarily. It would have taken us a little bit longer to get to where we were going, but you would have found it. Because this wire, we have low voltage on. Remember, we traced over to the other page where we checked those two fuses. Yeah. We have low voltage there. And I said, I know the computer has low voltage too because that wire, this splice right here goes down to the computer. Let's look at it just to make sure that you guys are all with me here. When we would go to the computer and check all of our main powers and grounds, we would be checking right there. What would we have found at the computer? Low reference voltage. We would have found three volts going into the computer at those two locations. That voltage is low. You would have backed up from there and said, okay, it comes from the power relay. And we would have ended up back at the power relay if we went to the computer first. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we would have been not necessarily chasing our tails, but it would have taken us a little longer. And what I was trying to do, the reason I went after the fuses instead of the computer mm -hmm. is I know that it was easier to check the fuses first than it was to go to the computer and identify those pins. Number one, find the computer. Number two, get to the location of it. And number three, find those pins and do those measurements. We would still be doing that. Okay. That make sense? That makes sense. Okay. As far as this circuit goes, let's, let's be clear, the load side coming into this relay, which is here and here, it comes from this 30 amp fuse. Um, are, are you guys comfortable with what I was saying about unplugging this relay and then measuring voltage here on this feed coming in is not a good test. It's not a good test because it's not loaded. As soon as you take the relay out of the picture, it's an unloaded circuit. And the reason that we plugged our tool in is it allowed us to monitor this circuit while the switch was closed. It's just like so, a light bulb and it's going to well, light up. Essentially, it's, it, it, I mean, you don't want to take a light bulb out to check a circuit. Is that yeah. what you mean by that? Yeah. Like if yeah. you, same thing, if you pull the light bulb out and check voltage, there's no load there's on There's no it load. Anymore. You need a load. We need the circuit complete when we do any voltage measurements ever. Okay. So when we pulled the tool, we pulled the relay out, we put the tool in, which allowed me to manually close it, which was taking the red wire and jumping it to the yellow wire. That's what it was doing. And that allowed me to do a loaded circuit voltage drop test that said, our red wire coming from the fuse in the back was fine. It was fine. Does that make sense? Yep. Unplugged test. You can't do that, guys. You cannot unplug a relay and check voltage and think that that's good, especially in this particular situation.
Alright, so next step, let's get a dump pack that has some juice to it. I said I have one. I have one. I have one. I don't know that we need anything else with the diagram or can I turn this desktop recording off? Are you sure? Yep. No yep. other questions yep. on the diagram? Nope. Anything with the reference voltage? Nothing. We good? Yeah, we're good. You should, you should sync the music in with your, uh, your video, Danner. <laughs> oh, we get some old school what, white snake and then what, an air hammer? I don't think it gets any worse. <laughs> so, hey, for those of you that have been following, I don't like to do tool reviews, and I did get a lot of hell for this NOCO one. So this, this company, oh my goodness, that's perfect timing. This company sent me this and I did a tool review and you know, uh, this tool has been pretty sweet. I'm going to use this to dump this car. So they claim 2000 amps with this little guy and there's a lot of people on the internet that think it's a big piece of crap and it'll never produce 2000 amps. I never cared. I don't care what it produces. Does it work? Does it start the car? It has every time. Good. Hit the power button. Hold it in. Good. That's it. We should be ready to go. You can, ah, you can set that down. What? What? It's still a no start. Wait, let me make sure I got five here. Hold on. The other thing too is with all of our low reference voltage stuff is we may have a bunch of codes that we need to clear. Yeah, so we have five volts. We're good there. Turn the key off and wait five seconds and then try it. Now we have no start. <laughs> is it because of your tool? Oh yeah. No, I have it. No, I have it installed. Our 5-volt ref is there. We're good. See, we got... No, we're, we're good with that. It, it should start. Um, but remember, someone's been in here and changed all kind of stuff. Let's clear those faults out of there. I don't think that, that the fault codes are going to... Uh, I don't even care about reading them. I want to reset it. There was a theft code in there. Was there? Yeah. that detected the engine disabled. Okay, well that's gonna keep it from starting. Right, but let's clear that code. And then reread them again. Let's make sure that that code is gone. Clear it again. You want me to do a key on engine off? What is it? Wait. No, it's... Read them again. This, this should be gone. Uh, that code is immediately coming back, so this car is not going to start. Hand me that key. And this key fob does not work either, I don't think, does it? Mm -mm. No. Good. Try, uh, turn the key back on again. I wonder if wonder it's not a replacement. Yeah, we might need another key for this, possibly. All right, hold on. Go ahead and clear that. So what I don't know here, is that actually clearing code? So here's what I'm going to do. Dan, you can come out here so you can see what's going on. I'm going to forcefully, I'm going to intentionally set a code on the TPS. See if it clears? Yep. Here you me. Got it. Wait, let's read it first. Let's see if it read. flags that code. Yeah, go ahead, read. I want to see a throttle position sensor error, fault. We might have to crank it for it to set it. Okay, sweet. All right, so we have TPS codes that I just set. Go ahead and clear them. And what this will mean is we have a hard fault for the anti-theft system. Does that make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. So this car is not going to start with an anti-theft code. Throttle actuator control forced limit. Okay, turn the key off and wait five seconds. Because I did kind of do that with the key on. Wait five, then turn the key back on. Key on. That 
code should be gone. All throttle control codes should be gone. Why is it not? Um, can you crank that for me again, Dan? We may clear it. Not yet. Okay, let off. Uh, turn the key off. All the way off. It all it's all the way off. I want to wait till that stops humming at me. Oh, you know what else? You know what else? I have this power relay circuit jumpered. That might be interfering with my anti-theft system. Let's swap the relay with another relay. Do you know which one? Shoot. I need to know what these other relays are. Otherwise, I don't have that page open. Do you just have another relay later? If I have another relay, we can use it. Here we go, I got one. You don't want to know what the other ones are? No, I got one. What I, what I wasn't considering here, guys, is with my jumper in here, since we're powering the circuit all the time, not ignition related, it was all the time, that could have been interfering with this anti-theft system and the throttle actuator control and why the code wouldn't go away. Let's do this. Let's make sure I have five volts um, when you turn the key on. That'll tell me that this relay is good. Okay, good. I got five volts, so we did put a good relay in there. Let's see if we can clear these codes out of here now. Yeah. Now try it. Now try it. It should start. It is missing like crazy. But the thing is, someone was in here and did all kind of stuff. Right? All kind of stuff. That's why when they put all new foils on it, it was missing. I don't know why they put all new coils on it, but let's be clear about this. So how do we get behind me here? Because we're done with this video. How do you sell a job like this? What do you do? Uh, the car came in. It was a no start. We did everything we needed to do. It needs a new power relay. Uh, how much time you would charge for a, a, something like this? Probably just an hour. An hour diagnostic time. Um, we're done. But. Some people are going to say, well, the car's got a misfire. You need to look at that. No, I don't. You, Mr. Customer, need to pay me to look at that because I did the no start diagnosis, right? I got my hour, I paid my, I paid my dues, right? Um, I, that's not the word I was looking for, but I guess that works. Um, <laughs> the car runs now. It has a running problem, completely separate. So for us, we're done this video at least. 5 volt reference circuit was key and I appreciate having you guys with me man uh, especially because we just went over this and, and that made it pretty damn cool James you like to have your head cut off in that. <laughs> That's all good. That's so there's James. we just went over this and we got to apply it and I got to show some of my guys again little plug for Rosedale Technical College that's where I teach these guys are from Rosedale Tech we're here after hours after school hours these guys wanted to come with me because they want to learn Guys, thanks for joining us. I hope you guys learned something from this too. Five volt reference circuit is key. All right, some bonus material. We got ignition coil G circuit malfunction. So let's be clear about this lettering here. This is a Ford. So typically Fords will go, one, uh, cylinder one would be passenger side typically. So it'd be one, two, three, four, which would be A, B, C, D, okay? five, six, seven, eights on this side, which would be E, F, and G. So G is this one right here. And that's not plugged in all the way, is it? Is that coil plugged in all the way? No. No. Nice. No. All right. And now the reason it didn't stop misfiring is that cylinder is going to be wet with fuel. And what we should have now is nice. Here, how much better it just started idling? Yep. So, okay. I'll get help from that from some people, like, oh, you should have done that. No, I, I, I shouldn't have done that. Even that by itself, guys, I wasn't paid for that, right? I, I know that took me two minutes to find out, but I also have a, in this particular case, it's a $1,300 scan tool that I use to get the code for that. Ah, okay, we could argue on ethics here and how you would bill this. I'm telling you, if this car came into me the way it was, I would do nothing else we did a no-start diagnosis. Yeah, we're leaking coolant pretty bad here, too. Where's yeah. that coming from? Is that cracked? I think it's a new one of them one of Just be careful. 
Yeah, that looks cracked. I don't know if it's cracked or coming out of the cap. Okay. Well, other things. But the car runs and the misfire's gone. Remember that lettering of the ignition coil. So nice little lesson there for I, I you guys too. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I, I knew James would be asking me questions about the tool. One of the things we didn't cover in the video is we can also do uh, control circuit testing with this. And the LED actually lights telling you have a power and a ground. Did you notice when I had this plugged in that that light was lit? That told you that we had uh, control circuit power and ground. And then the other nice thing is this amp clamp, that's for your amp clamp for the load side of the circuit. So we can do current measurements here. So you can unplug a fuel pump relay and put your amp clamp around here. And then you can do, yeah, your control circuit voltage tests can be done here, just like we did our load circuit voltage tests up here. And then one final piece, we're gonna pull this relay apart. I know you guys wanna see this burnt contact because I do. And I don't care if I ruin the relay. This is a bad relay anyway. And if it's not a bad relay, then we have a bad contact up there. Let's see if we can show this. This is my load side. You just stay still, James. Let me bend this out of the way. There's your, I, I, it doesn't look as burnt as I thought, but there would be th that black spot right there, and then that black spot right there. I would have thought that'd be a lot worse than that. But that's it, man. Poor contact in those two locations. I need to just double check this real quick right here. The car's gonna shut off, but. Yeah, no, those pins are fine. They're perfectly fine. So that that's it, just that little black spot. Just enough. Just enough here and here. Crazy, crazy. Okay, start that back up. Hopefully our battery voltage is high enough. Sweet. Any, anything else? Are we done? Are we done for real? I think we're done. Okay, cool.